Welcome back to Hashtag Single with Jeanette Bonner. I am not a relationship expert or sex therapist. I'm just a regular New York City woman navigating the world as a single, independent feminist. Hashtag Single is about having honest conversations with other singles in today's device-obsessed culture. So I hope you'll join me on this interesting, challenging, and complex journey as we navigate the ins and outs of singledom. Hello, hello. Welcome back to Hashtag Single Jeanette here. Thanks so much for joining. We are recording this episode on the very first day of summer, you guys. Doesn't feel like summer, but it is. So let me officially welcome you to your hot girl summer 2022. Woo! And if you are looking down the barrel of your summer thinking it's not looking close to a hot girl summer, Jeanette, we got you. Because this summer, I'm going to feature on the podcast several options for you to get the F away from the dusty, old, broken dating apps and start dating again. So uh, that being said, it is my pleasure to kick off this uh, new adventure with my guest this month, Benjamin Goodman, the marketing and events consultant of speed dating company City Swoon. Benjamin, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. It's so fun to be in person. I've been doing a lot of like virtual podcast episodes, so looking you in the eyes is... Um, very feeling very intimate. <laughs> I, I hear you. Sharing I was, space with you. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I was talking to somebody in the elevator on the way up here too, and and they were, were talking about you know, still, you know the kind of the um, you know the eye to eye contact and just kind of being a room with somebody is having the vibe of you know, recording a live podcast. Yeah, this is something different than Zoom. Or, it's or weird that like we're like you know it's it's not like it's 2021 here. Like we're mm-hmm. coming back. It, it's weird that it still feels like we're adjusting. You know, we're still shifting and getting our groove back a little bit. I, I, yeah, I think it's kind of everybody's kind of getting out there again. Yeah, it's you're like, like, oh, wait, how did I used to act in public? Okay. Yeah. So, cool. We're going to get started. Your your bio on LinkedIn just reads, I'm going to quote here, entrepreneurial marketing professional with background in sales and event planning. So we're going to have to dig a little deeper here. I didn't get much from my internet stocking. What is your story? How did you end up at City Spoon four years ago? And happy work anniversary, by the way. Oh, thanks. Yeah. You joined in July, right? It, uh, I think it was June or July of... Um of 2018, 2018 yeah. uh, it was helped them launch New York, and um, I think they they launched maybe a month or two before they launched in San Francisco. So I've, I've been with them for a while, and we've launched some other cities, and it's been pretty 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 strong. exciting uh, ride for four years. So what's your story? How did you end up at this company? How did you get started? Yeah, you know, I've been in the business for a while. I've, I've um, well, I kind of started off doing a concert promotion years ago. So I, I ran my own company. I did concerts, uh, a lot of different venues here in New York. I was bringing communities together. So whether it's hey, this guitar player to play with this bass player or, you know, just bringing people in a room to see, you know, a great bill of acts. So I've always been about community connecting people. Um, and I switched in the dating space uh, back in 2015. I just thought, you know, less people to deal with. Um, <laughs> Little did you know. <laughs> yeah, well, well, it's, well it's, it's, a, it's a different, I mean, I do a lot of people still, but it's just like I don't have to deal with, you know, managers and, and, oh, and, I feel and you. all that kind of stuff. So it's a little bit easier to kind of get uh, an event up and running Yeah. Um, you know, without all kinds of, uh, you know, with, with less people to deal with. So what, what were you, what was the company, are you allowed to mention it, that you were with in 2015? Uh, yeah, it was, I was with a company called Crush Mobile. And then uh, I, I was with a company, uh, Social Concierge, for a little bit. And uh, but yeah, I've been with uh, City Swoon yet for four years. And, wait, wait, Crush Mobile and what was the other one? Uh, Social Concierge. Are they still in? I don't. I've never uh, heard Crush of Crush Mobile. I'm I'm not sure if they're active right now. Um, and then uh, Social Concierge is long out of business. Yeah. God, it's crazy how many of them like sort of, like. I was researching, or I have been researching, mm-hmm. other IRL dating event companies to invite them on the podcast this summer, and there's so many that were on my list that have folded. It's like maybe that's just like the way of startups and apps, you know. I mean, it always was that way, you know. Since I've been in this business, you know, there's been there's a new app, especially in New York. There's a new app, new you know event company every week. Yeah. And most of them don't make it. I mean, City Soon, you know, we, we've been going strong for four years, and. And uh, I think we're just we're just an authentic company bringing people together, and I think that's why we've kind of had the staying power where you know our competitors, you know, sadly have not unfortunately, but definitely have been a lot of interesting concepts I've seen over the years and and things like that, and just kind of it's it's, it's an exciting space because everybody's kind of you know has their own kind of 
a niche of, of doing the event or an app and things like that. Yeah. It's also very, very competitive as well. It's very, sure, sure, sure. It's very cutthroat. But look, there's a lot of wonderful people in the industry, too, that you know, like to bounce ideas off of and things like that. I have a wonderful idea for a dating app, which we'll get into another time. So, I have brought it up on the podcast before, but people are like, this is a great idea. And I'm like, I just don't want to spend my life working on launching a, a dating company or an app like at all. Like I see how hard it is. Yeah, it's and, a constant no, hustle. Thank you. Yeah. I have two great um, uh, women that I know that I've been on the podcast before, and they launched this phenomenal dating app called Foreplay. And it's um, like you and your best friend of the same sex looking for, you know, assuming that you're both straight, looking for two people of the opposite sex who are also friends. So it's like group dating. Yeah. Um, and it's it's genius. And But there, I see the behind the scenes of like how hard it is to get an app and a dating app going like and raising capital for it. So anyway. We don't mean to detract from City oh, Soon. I'm just all like, good. No, no, yeah, it's... all the like. I just want to commend you guys for still being in the game. I guess it's Definitely, so great. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So tell us about the company City Soon and like how it got started. So the company started almost nine years ago in Australia. Uh, they actually launched. Um, they're still in the Guinness Book of World Records for this, but they launched the the largest blind speed dating event ever at the iconic Sydney Opera House. I saw that, but like, how, what does that mean? How many people? I, I had like uh, over 800 people at it. And, uh, How do you match 800 people? That's insane. Uh, I mean, they just kind of did. I think they, they had longer dates and things like that. And, and yeah, I heard us. You know, and, you know, and that's kind of what drew me to the company, too. It's like, that's really exciting. You know, it's an iconic world-class venue, a lot of people. So I thought that was uh, kind of a fun uh, fun selling point. Um, but, yeah, it was started by a husband and wife team. And then they've expanded throughout Australia. Um, and then we're here. Like I said, we're in New York, Philly, Chicago, Boston, D.C., San Diego, LA and San Francisco. Yeah, that's so interesting. What was the, uh, if you know, like what was the concept of the founding of this? Like what ground were they trying to break when they created it? Sure, so a few things. So yeah, our co-founders are Brett and Louise. They're they're still based in Sydney, Australia. Um, And they kind of wanted to bring people together in a genuine, authentic way. Um, You know, not on the dating apps. Um, No, no, you know, traditional speed dating, you have the name tags, you have the bell, the mic. (laughs) you know, assigned seating and things like that. So they want something a little bit more natural and organic and just a really fun new way to connect people, you know, taking kind of the best of of tech and the best of real life and um, putting it all together in an event uh, where you could live match people with uh, our unique patented algorithm. Um, So that's kind of of our key selling point as well. Um, You know, the algorithm takes in things like uh, education and age and height, horoscope, uh, you know, religion, et cetera, to, uh, to do matching live at the event. So what's their background? Are they uh, like startup, entrepreneurs, app founders? Like where are they coming from before um, they founded this? Sure. So Louise, uh, she's our CTO. So she kind of has a, you know, a development background. And um, our CEO, Brett, uh, he's worked in um, uh, finance and, and, and uh, other things as well. So. Yeah, but they've been doing it for, you know, for almost nine years, so it's, you know, it's So they're, in, they're like, okay, we landed on this thing that we love, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just interesting to me, like, obviously, especially when you have um, newer startups or newer companies, like, um, as you mentioned, it's sort of tangential to a lot of industries. Dating apps are sort of in the zeitgeist right now, so I'm always curious if people think they're kind of capitalizing on a new idea, and then they find out that this new idea is actually really challenging, you know. There's just a lot of different new concepts out there, and, and people definitely try to reinvent the wheel. But um, you know, a lot of things uh, are just a new kind of concept, or even a lot of people are kind of you know trying to you know cater even to Gen Z and, and the, different totally. niches and things like that. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of an interesting um, way to look at things. I mean, also a lot of the bigger players they're they're kind of buying a lot of people up and acquiring people as well. It's a little bit mm-hmm. like the record business. A lot of the bigger labels are buying up the smaller labels. It's the same kind of thing. Uh, you know, a lot of the bigger dating app companies are acquiring some of the smaller guys. Who do you think in New York is like your like or who does City Spoon think of as their number one competitor in the space? That's really a good question. I mean, I think we're really unique um, in terms of the, the tech focus. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. No one else is kind of really doing that. at Agreed. Event. Uh, I mean, you know, we do, you know, we do, um, you know, target you know, specific people in our marketing and branding and advertising. And also we have our kind of a rating 
system as well. You rate like your dates like an Uber or Lyft driver, you know, through one through five, and you do for naturally. We'd say, hey, she's funny, he's smart, um, he's handsome, and, and things like that. But another thing, you know, too, that we do is we work really, really hard to have the numbers as balanced as possible. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, like an event with like eighty percent women or or ninety percent men or, or whatever. Right. Something like that. I will say I did another uh, in person. Uh, wasn't speed dating, but sort of like a in person mix party that, what am i trying to say a uh, mixer yeah mixer i'm like a mix party that's yeah. not right a mixer yeah um and i would say that it, the odds were in my favor shall we say you know it's like a lot of guys maybe like 80 80 20 um, oh, wow. male heavy which was really unique you know because i'm fascinated by this psychology of of why more women or more men tend to gravitate towards a certain dating apps and then b certain situations like in person versus virtual versus speed versus just like mixer you know mm -hmm. yeah i um, mean i think this is definitely a, a pro and a con all those kind of things i think um you know speed dating it's also you know just kind of uh, you, know, you kind of bring people together and you get it matched up. There's some people, you know, be a little shy or they like the algorithm or they want, they like the matching in an event, you know, like the kind of the, the mini dates. If the date's going well, you know, it's just, you, get, you get like a nice vibe of the person. But if it's not, you know, oh, I could, oh, it's 10 minutes, let me, let me move on. So I think I'm um, just kind of a way to kind of, it's a little bit time. Uh, Takes the pressure off. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like we've gotten a little ahead of ourselves because you and I are very familiar with the experience in the, mm -hmm. uh, the company. Um, but let's um, break it down for me. Like, let's say I've never heard of City Spoon. If you're listening to this podcast and being like, what the F are they talking yeah. about? <laughs> They've been going on and on, and I don't even know what they're talking about. Um, so tell us, like, I'm logging in, cityspoon.com. Like, break it down for me. How does it work? Sure, yeah. So basically, you log on our website. Um, you create a profile. It's pretty like similar to a dating app. Well, it is a dating app profile, uh, pretty much. But, but shorter. It's, which, it's a little, little shorter. more succinct, yeah. So you put your photo. You put, you know, age, height, horoscope. Um, you know, things I mentioned earlier, the algorithm takes into account. Uh, you kind of put that in your profile. Uh, you, know, you create the account, you buy a ticket and or a membership to the event. So the ticket, you can buy either a one-off ticket to an event, or if you um, pay for a membership, you get um, uh, online dating access, and you also you get uh, di steeply discount tickets to in-person and virtual events. So you get like 50% off. It's good. Hey, you want to check out some different you know, venues, neighborhoods, age ranges. That's kind of what I say that the benefit is. And uh, I would say our online dating uh, portal right now you get two to four daily suggested dates that you know you can message the algorithm sets up i say it's a little bit similar to the league in, in terms of that it's a little bit more of a, a shorter curated list there's no endless swiping which i think people are some people are getting sick of yeah so you buy a ticket to let's say there's a, i get an email and i've gotten these emails i'm like on the newsletter list so i get an email that says like there's an event on thursday night or you can just look at events in mm -hmm. new york city for the calendar of july there's an event in new york city at a bar they don't give you your the name but a bar in a neighborhood let's pick Flatiron district right yeah. and the age the give age range so let's say it is 28 to 42 that's large but you know what i'm saying so yeah. we give a we give a window right definitely so basically yeah so you you just select your event you buy the ticket you show up on the night of you log into your profile self-checking which is nice you know you don't, you don't have to wait in line to be checked in or, or wait you know, and i'll also just interrupt you for a second oh, because sorry. on the one that that you and i were in the same room at last month mm -hmm. i was running late and they were they called me on my phone and like where are you yeah, like, we, wow this is really impressive like making me accountable yeah that's showing another, up. yeah that's another thing too you know people that they kind of you know take a little more time than usual to to get to events now i guess people start kind of getting back out there again so you got to remember um, how long the subway takes or you know yeah, like what happened to me today there might be a train yeah. in front of you with you police never, activity no yeah. big deal <laughs> um yeah so yeah so basically uh, you log in the event um, the host kind of gets things started on his or her phone, so they'll, they'll activate the dating rounds. You'll see your date's name and photo on your phone. Let's say you're matched with Brad, you'll see Brad's name and photo. Uh, you find each other in the venue, and then uh, the host will help out with that as well if you need help. And um, th then you kind of talk to you know, seven, eight rounds usually, 10, 12 minutes, and, and then you get a, a rating system, so like we, we talked about earlier, so it kind of you know, shows who you like and things like that. Then the event ends. A lot of people tend to hang out and, and chat more, and you get an email the next day. And you can message your matches on our site. And you can also message up to two people you didn't date from the event as well. And you can also rate people that you didn't have a chance to as well. Yeah. So the speed dates, 
uh, are a little longer than normal. I think a lot of people affiliate or associate uh, speed dating with like three to five minute rounds. And these are a little longer, like, yeah, like you said, 10 minutes. to 12 minutes. Yeah. And then you get a notification on your phone that says like, okay, this round is over. It's time to go meet Ben. Yeah. Um, and then you go find Ben or Ben comes to find you. And then you start all over again. And that happens about, um, what would you say? Like eight to 10 people per night? Uh, we do seven, eight dates usually. Seven or eight. Yeah. yeah. And the first date, um, or rather the first event that I attended, there, I don't know if there was like not enough people or if the numbers were off, but there were two rounds where it was like, hey, we don't have a match for you this round. So just like head to the bar and get a drink or take a break, which I found was nice because on the second event that I attended, I got a drink before we started. But then it was like, you know. Yeah, <laughs> boom, just, boom, boom. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know, there wasn't a time to get water. There wasn't a time to go to the bar. There wasn't. I I took time out of one date to go to the bathroom, and I'm like, I'm so sorry. I feel really bad, but like, I'll make it up to you. You yeah, know, like these yeah, four I mean, minutes that I have. Yeah, I mean, again, you know, that's why the, there the should rounds, be an intermission, Ben. May, maybe, maybe, <laughs> but um, we, the rounds a little longer for that too. You know, it's twelve minutes. You know, you take a couple right. minutes to the restroom or, or get a drink at the bar, or order something to eat. Um, but yeah, also that, that's a good point you brought up is that we also, for example, let's say we have an event. You know, look, there's some people, you know, especially in this environment, you'll have like some, you know, unexpected last minute cancellations or no shows or latecomers. So um, let's say, for example, there's two extra women in an event. They may go on a friend round together. So you just so just a chance to hang out and, and talk for 10 minutes to somebody else. But again, you don't have to because always get a good drink at the bar yeah. or, or uh, you know, ask the host some questions and things yeah. like that. So after um, the person you have met, uh, their round is over. The app will automatically generate a instant feedback. Mm -hmm. so you can sort of rate them in the moment, um, which always feels a little uncomfortable because, like, like you said, there's like an Uber element to it, where you're like rating, or that Black Mirror episode where you're like rating human beings, and. So what my mistake in my first event was just rating everyone really high because they were really nice people that I wasn't mm. actually interested in dating. And then it was like, hey, all the people that you rated fours and above also liked you. And now you guys can go and date. And I was like, oh, I should be clearer that like, nice, didn't want to go on a date with that though, you know? Yeah, so in that case, you know, it's kind of a one three. out of five, it's three. A, three. Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. Good one, so. But you feel creepy, like, giving a person, like, a nice person a three. Like, it just feels a little shitty. I hear, no? I hear you, but uh, <laughs> look, no, look, I think it's okay because, you know, you just enjoy meeting them and maybe there's no chemistry, but right, it's always nice right. to get out there and chat with some nice people, so. It just feels, yes. So you're not rating the human. You're. I have to remind myself I'm, I'm rating the possibility of there being a match. You're not actually like all of the humans were lovely, but didn't necessarily want to go on a second date with them. Totally get it. <laughs> so why don't I just like summarize it for me? Like what what are the key factors that that make City Spoon different from other speed dating events? Um, yes, yeah, so we kind of talked a little, little bit before, but I would say um, uh, the Agram does live matching at the events. Uh, other companies they'll just kind of throw everybody in a room. Hey, ladies, sit you know down in a row, and the men rotate throughout the night. Or, you know, maybe uh, someone, someone will have a matchmaker at the event and they'll kind of do the matching. But our algorithm kind of does the matching based on the attributes you know, we talked about in the profile and things like that. Uh, also, the dates are longer, uh, 10, 12 minutes each. Three to five minutes, it's, it's a little bit of a short time to get to know somebody. So um, it's kind of, hey, my name is Ben. And, and then, you know, the round's almost up. Or it's, so it's a little more of like a Tinder feel with at that as well. Just you kind of go on, on the person's looks where if you're done for 10, 12 minutes, you get to know them a little better. And, and uh, you know, maybe share some common interests, hopefully, and things like that. And also we don't, like I said, no name tags. There's no bell. There's no mic. So it's not awkward. Um, it's all organic. It's, it's, a, it's, um, it's natural. Um, and, you know, people kind of hang out and chat like you're a regular bar, but you know everybody's single and looking uh, to date other people. And I would say also we work um, with uh, more premier venues uh, than some of our competitors as well. For example, on the Century Flat Iron, uh, we did an event there last week. They have a beautiful view and nice cocktails. It's really, it's a really lovely venue. Yeah, I will say that like, but I don't care for speed dating for that exact reason. I feel like you just end up having the same conversation over and over again because you, you know, people start with um, small talk like, "What's your name? What do you do? What neighborhood do you live in?" And then the bell goes off, and you're like, "What's your name? What do you do? What neighborhood do you live in?" So, so previously, I never did it. This was my first time experiencing speed dating because it was longer, mm -hmm. because there is the algorithm that is supposed to be matching you with ideal people in the room, um, and also like. 
I always imagine speed dating like a long table, like the Last Supper, right? Like you got like 10 guys on one side and like 10 women on the other side. It's just musical chairs and you just shift over and talk to the next person, which feels um, very kind of institutional, <laughs> maybe. So I love the idea of kind of just um, milling about the room and finding a table in a corner and just picking up a conversation with people. Like that's what enticed me from the beginning. Definitely. And I was like, let me give this a go. But so one of the things I find really, really fascinating about City Student, and you've mentioned this many times, but um, so just to recap, you guys have events in eight cities across America, six cities in Australia, two in Canada, and the UK coming soon. Was there a plan to be international from the get, like when they were first launching it? Do you know? Um, I'm not sure. I think that, you know, they, they were like before they launched here in the States, they were uh, running events in Australia for four or five years. So they've built a really strong footprint in Australia. So I think they're looking to come to the States and other, and other, uh, other countries. But um, in terms of the get go, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I yeah. would say I, I would assume so. I think, look, I think if you if you're doing an events company, yeah, you, you want to scale as much as possible. Yeah. Um, just... But at the same time, like, that's ambitious. I mean, it's different. It's one thing to say, okay, well, we're, we're Bumble and we're going to be international. But to try to do events in countries that you don't live in, like, all all over the world, I find that fascinating. Yeah, so, I mean, a couple of things, too, is, well, Bumble, they actually do events all over the globe as well. That's not their main business, but it's more for branding and things like that. Right. But again, look, you know, with City Swim, too, that, you know, that are somebody like me, that's kind of where I came in to help them with the U.S. market and things like that. So, you know, again, there's a big time difference as well. So, yeah. Um, you know, so it's, it's a little, definitely a little tricky, so. And so do you feel like, I mean, I guess it's impossible to compare and contrast, but is there one country that feels like it's leading the pack. I imagine it's Australia because that's where they so Australia is where they started. It. But and there's so many single people in New York, you know. <laughs> definitely. I mean, we're, we're you know, again, we're doing pretty well here. You know, we, we do different age ranges as well. So we do every, events for people from their mid-20s to their mid-50s. So I think we're able to accommodate a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and in San Francisco, we, we've started running um, some gay speed dating events um, at a place called Pilsner Inn. So uh, we're expanding to other demographics as good, well. Good, good. Because that was one of my questions, like, what I've seen or what I, I don't know if, if this was my experience just based on what I have entered into my personal profile and my algorithm, but it seemed to be that a lot of the events were straight events. Yeah. So, so in New York right now, we're, we're only doing straight, but you know, hopefully we'll do some gay events soon. But like I said, we're, we're really focusing. We're having a lot of success with the gay events in San Francisco. Yeah. And also we do them in Australia too, Melbourne and Sydney. They do really well. Good, good. I'm happy to hear that. I don't know how much you know about the events on the international end, but like, I suppose if I've learned anything from this podcast, there's only slight cultural differences when trying to date online. But they do exist. So I'm curious if you've personally noticed or heard from your colleagues if there's any differences in the way the events go in other countries or cities. I think it's kind of similar in a lot of ways. But also, you know, look here in, you know, in the States, Australia, you also have a lot of immigrants as well. So I think that kind of makes things kind of similar. You kind of bring everybody together. And we're both cultural melting pots. So I think there are a lot of similarities. I think some cities are a little bit more male heavy. Some cities are a little more female oh, heavy. Oh, interesting. Um, you know, some demographics you know may may do you know perform better business wise in the cities. Um, and I think look, it's just sometimes uh, some people may be looking for something more serious. Some people may be looking for something more casual. I actually haven't seen a, an event in Australia in action, but um, definitely here in the states, I think some cities are a little bit more more female uh, heavy or more male mm -hmm. heavy. And I think um, like New York maybe is a better city for men to date. Um, really? Yeah. Think, Wait, you can't let that go by. Tell me more. Because you know this is sort of a feminist leading podcast. Yeah. So why is New York City a better city for I men I think there's just date? more women here. And I think um, like in Philly, I think uh, it's a little more female friendly city. I feel it's, it's more, more, more men heavy uh, in Philly, for example. So just numbers wise. Numbers wise, yeah. New York is a better city for men to date in, meaning they have more options and choices. Correct, yeah. More, more women are single in New York City. I would say, yeah, I would say so. <laughs> it's interesting because like, and I haven't looked in a while, so maybe this has changed in the pandemic, but technically the skew is like 49.51. But, you know, with a city of 8 million people, maybe 2% is enough of a percentage that it feels large, you know? Yeah. But there's technically a split right down the middle between single men and single women. So it's interesting that your perception or your experience, at least with behind the scenes, seems like there's like a lot more ladies. <laughs> yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I just think in New York, you know, yeah, I just think that's kind of the case. My personal theory, uh, and this has come up in various ways on the podcast, is that 
women are more likely to seek and ask for help across the board. We're talking about like going to the doctor, going to therapy, asking for a career coach, right? Mm -hmm. So I think more women are probably more likely to look for other options in to date than men. So I don't know that the numbers are necessarily different. It might just be like more women are out like on the apps and looking for events to go to. Do you are you allowed to talk about if there's plans for future expansion aside from the UK? Um I think we're, we're looking at you know maybe doing South Florida later in the year. Oh Miami? Uh, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, it's it's kind of it's up in the air and, and a little bit in terms of exactly when and and, and uh you know, which city cities we would launch in, but Miami and or Fort Lauderdale we're looking to do later in the year. And New York and San Francisco are your biggest American cities? San Diego, we do really, really well in San Diego. People just love to get out there and just meet, um, I think it's because outdoorsy and so yeah. down. So San Diego, we do really well. New York, we do well. Um, it's currently, you know, New York, Philly, and D.C. on the East Coast the are, leaders. are the leaders of the moment. Um, you know, but again, we're still pretty relatively new in Boston and um, in Chicago, it's kind of a big spread out city. So I think, yes, it's, it can be hard sometimes to get everybody in, you know, one bar in one neighborhood in Chicago. But, yeah, totally. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, the summer's coming up, so, uh, or it's here now, so the, you know, hopefully the Chicago events will, will get a little bigger. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's, they have a totally different, like, winter versus summer culture. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, They're like, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> So now you organize these events, at least in New York City, right? But you're often there as well, yeah? Yeah. So at a, at the recent City Soon event that we were talking about that I went to last month, we, as you know, had some tech glitches. And you were there giving everyone the signal to, like, move on to their next days. Yeah, like, so. you were there when the, when the algorithm failed. So being that you are present, give me some insights. Like, what have you learned about single people in New York City by attending and watching countless single people go on speed dates? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, generally most people, they just want to get out there and just, you know, uh, you know, just meet people and just have, you know, have a good time. Even like at the events, I'm always pulling couples apart, too. I'm like, I'm, I'm so glad you guys have a wonderful time, but it's time to move on. And oh, like good. Stuff, okay. So. Um, yeah, so that that's um, that, that's kind of it. I mean, I guess I'm I'm, I'm an optimist. I don't, I don't know if I'm I don't know if the of, of the gossip and stuff, but uh, oh, I want the juice. Come yeah. on, Ben. <laughs> I want you to be like, do you ever like I don't know like insights like uh, I always notice that uh, men are more nervous, or I always notice that uh, women start the conversation first, or I don't know something dumb. Well, I think um, you know. It's, look, it's 2022, but I, I feel like a lot, a lot of women they, they want the guys to approach them at the events. But uh, I think that's kind of one, uh, you know, kind of social thing at the events. But um, but uh, look, women approach men as well. I think some people get some people get a little shy, you know, but uh, to approach people as well sometimes. But you know, that's we're, we're there to help, you know, uh, guide people and, and you know, be a hand to hold and all that kind of stuff. And you know, some you know some people uh, you know, they just come to me like, hey, I'm just so happy to be out there again and meeting people. And and uh, I think a lot of people are mystic. Definitely, some people you know that have had really long checklists and things like that. So maybe some people got a little bit pickier, but I think in general, people are just. Happy to come out and have a good time. And, and, you really uh, are an optimist. Yeah. I really just want some like dirty, like, oh, you know what I have noticed? Because um, I have I have so much, I don't know, maybe too many, like, <laughs> insights from being single for so long. I'm like, hmm, here's what I've noticed about dating in New York City. But I will say, like, in both of my events that I've attended, I have sat in place and the guys came to me. The first time I thought that was just sort of accidental because I happened to be sitting at the bar and they were like, oh, well, come over here and get a drink. Yeah. Um, and then the second time, I don't know, it's like an interesting subconscious choice that yeah. uh, like no one ever said, now the men get up and find your next lady. Um, but I did notice that kind of happened organically. De definitely. I just think a lot of people kind of used to that. But again, you know, we have women that come to the events and they, and they go find their dates as well. Or, yeah. Or something, you know, like you, you, people that have a really, they have a nice little corner or they have a nice little table or a really great spot at the bar that they just want to sit there and, yeah. and, and just do their thing. But. I did have to sit at the last one because my app, 
I had no idea who I was meeting. Do you remember that? Oh yeah, there was a. Yeah. I think it might have been an internet connectivity issue. Yeah, yeah. There was so. like no, there was no cell service at the back of this bar. Yeah. <laughs> so I had no idea who I was meeting, and I was like, some pe- people are just gonna have to find me. They were like, hey, you're my match. I'm like, if you say so. <laughs> like, yeah, take but, a seat. Yeah, once in a while, look. I mean, overall the events were really smooth, but you know, once in a while I have someone. Oh, I'm, I've been, I can't log in or whatever it is. So you know, look, that's kind of what the hosts are there as well. Like, right. Like, guide people. Hey, you don't. Hey, or I'll tell someone, hey, just take a seat there, and I'll I'll bring your dates bring to you. To you. Yeah. I'll bring you dates to you. So, <laughs> um, so Sp- City Soon offers virtual speed dating, Correct. right? I'm curious if you know, like, if the virtual or the IRL is more popular versus like more successful matches are yielded. Um, so I would say right now we're focused, at least in the Northern Hemisphere, we're focused more on um, uh, in-person events. Yeah. In summertime, if you want to get out there. Um, I think in the winter we'll, we'll do some more, vir- go back to a little more virtual events. No but, one wants to get off the couch. Yeah, yeah. so, but... Um, yeah, I mean the the virtual it's a little bit different because uh, the rounds are a little bit uh, shorter. Also, I think it's it's um, we get some people that you know maybe you know maybe we get like for example some single parents that'll come to the events too because it's, it's one hour they go on a computer or their phone and just have the date oh, as well. Right, right. So I think there's some people you know so that's that's kind of been an opportunity to help, you know some people have really busy schedules maybe live out in a suburb and they they don't want to come to the city necessarily to meet somebody and they can kind of meet somebody um, you know on online and also. To compare to competitors, we have our own platform. So we don't use Zoom. We don't use other video platforms. We have our own video platform that we use. Uh, we have a couple of hosts. We have um, or a couple of hosts each event. They kind of do their thing. They'll kind of have some banner and greet everybody. And you know, for example, let's say somebody's internet connection dropped out. They'll they'll talk to the other person or um, or you know, let's say for example, a person didn't show up. They kind of talk as well and greet people. And you know, again, they're kind of five minute dates, five six minute dates, but just under an hour. In person events, it's a little bit more. It's more of a commitment. It's two hours. Yeah, you gotta get. To I the like venue. it. I'm like, listen, whoever's gonna actually like get dressed today is worth meeting. Absolutely, and then also, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Not that you're like yeah. naked on the, but you know what I mean. Like they, they, they make people coming pretty, out making an, make an effort. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So, and then I don't think too is it's it's convenient um, because. Um, uh, maybe not a big drinker. Maybe they don't like going to bars and so True, so right? Good point. Another outlet for people to date. Yeah, I love that. I hadn't thought that through. Um, I have one final hot seat question for you. Sure. <laughs> you ready? Yep. I like to offer a uh, a little bit of a hot seat question to all of my guest experts. So, um, so I'm going to read you a quote from the website that's going to preface this question. All right. City Spoon uses, this is nothing that you haven't said already, City Soon uses the profile attributes and the feedback from previous meetings to match you to other attendees at the event for each date round. You will be matched based on your profile. The algorithm uses your entire profile, including your educational background, political beliefs, religion, height, age, etc., and your answers to the personality questions. The algorithm also uses feedback that you have given from any previous City Spoon dates. However, on my most recent City Swoon date, my last date was a man who firstly told me that he took the day off because it was Friday the 13th, because in 2022, Friday the 13th was the last weekday before the city went into full lockdown. So mm-hmm. pink flag there. Yeah. But then I asked what he did with his day off, and he told me he went to a live taping at Fox News. And when I asked how it was, he told me it was really great because they made fun of Joe Biden and then proceeded to compare Joe Biden to JFK in the Cuban Missile Crisis and said that he was leading the country into World War III based off his choices with Russia and the war with Ukraine. So, Ben, I am not saying that I'm like a super Bernie Sanders, you know, like left supporter in my profile, but nothing in my profile should match me with a a hardcore Republican conspiracy theorist. Oh, man. Uh, So I I, I hear you. So um, (laughs) So what happened? So, I mean, look at other things, too. There may have been height. There could have been, you know, uh, you know, other attributes as well. Education, maybe as a master's degree and and things like that. So I I would say probably the other uh, I would say other attributes made sense. So um, overrid this um, pink turning hot flaming red flag. Yeah. I mean, again, look, it's it's uh, again, look, it's it's. uh, it's an imperfect system. It's imperfect, but, okay. but um, sometimes. But you look again. There's other attributes as well, and, and things like okay. that. And and I'm, you know, again, I'm, I, uh, I I just kind of clicked the button at the end. <laughs> I told you I was going to put you in the hot seat. Oh, man. I know it's not your fault, yeah. but at the same time, and it was my last date too. I hear so you. So it was really like um, it just didn't end on a high note for me. That was it. Really bothered me. Like um, a, our political beliefs were not 
in the same time zone. But it bothered me that that person would use very precious eight minutes to talk at me about um, some things that have nothing to do with whether or not we might get along. I'm glad he talked about it because I knew it was like hard no within the first yeah, I mean, look, I, two yeah, seconds. Yeah, you know? I mean, look, and I, it's in a way it's a positive too because you know if you're not it's not something you're looking for, then you know you can always you know right. I would have known right away, so, but yeah. like I said, I think listen, I, I'm not even. I, I think there are a few women in New York City uh, who would be okay with that conversation on a speed date. I mean, there's definitely more conservatives <laughs> here than I think we realize, but... Uh... Um, you know, it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, so I just wanted to, yeah, get your thoughts on, like, what's up with the actual algorithm. But, you know... Yeah, I would say it would probably be some of the other attributes uh, that, that matched you guys. We just never found out what they were. I hear, I hear you. I'll, I'll take a look at it for you. No, so. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Honestly. <laughs> R.I.P. that guy. It's fine. Um... Well, thank you so much for being here. It's been really a pleasure to have a conversation with you in person, Definitely. in real life, yeah. in keeping with the theme of uh, of City Soon and uh, and with what I think. Like, listen, we've all been indoors for two years, right? Not a full two years, obviously. Mm -hmm. And I think people are really exhausted by virtual dating, by app dating, and everyone's trying to look for something new. So I'm so excited to introduce City Soon to people that don't know about it and to get people out of their damn apartments and meeting in real life again. I think it's really important. Absolutely. I totally agree. Yeah. So um, guys, if you're interested, CitySoon.com. Anything you want to add before we log off, Ben? Do you have a nice discount? offer for listeners of hashtag single um you can, you can write into us admin <laughs> contact the city soon Put maybe we'll uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll, we'll, we can see if we work something out oh, so. okay okay um thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode as always if you have a friend who is struggling with updating and might want to date in real life send them over to city soon after sending them to this podcast episode share this along with them and all of your friends and hopefully i will see you at the next event come join us on instagram over at hashtag single pod join in the conversation over there and i hope to see you out there having a great hot girl summer 2022 we will catch you next time